Greetings, Bat Family, and welcome to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. You can visit our website, holybatcast.com, or find us all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, X, Instagram, YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast, you will find us. And if you're a big fan of the show and you want to support us, you can do that on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. And as always, a big thank you to all our patrons. You guys are awesome. I hope you know how appreciated you are. It just makes the... It makes keeping the show going that much easier. It's one less thing to worry about, and I, it means the world to us. So thank you for everybody who's done that, because we're doing the show anyway. You're getting it for free, and a bunch of y'all were kind enough to go, you know what, I still want to help, and I hope you know that I appreciate that. So thank you, guys. Patreon, y'all are awesome. Uh, we're part of the Real Fans Podcast Network. You can check out those shows at rf4rm.com. As I probably mentioned on recent episodes, there's lots of fun Halloween content on the original Real Fans feed. So check out the original Real Fans for Real Movies show. Recently, we did a whole thing about a Halloween cereal, which was a lot of fun. And coming up soon is the Halloween commercial special. So lots of good spooky stuff to listen to. And then finally, I'm your bat host and your bat pal. You can find me on Twitter, X, Instagram, Threads, and Letterboxd. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova. This episode, it's another random one, but that's okay. Because there hasn't been a lot of news. Because with the strikes, the writer strike, and the actor strike, like news has come to a halt, which is kind of nice, actually. It's nice to get a little break from it. So it allows us to do some weird and random episodes. And so on this episode, we're going to talk about some toys from the Batman and Robin toy line back in 1997. And joining me for that is who is, I guess now he is the, the foremost expert on the subject because he wrote <laughs> a very extensive article about it over on Batman News. It's our pal. You hear, you hear his name often on this show. He's not on the show often, but anytime we're like, gosh, you know what? I don't know if this happened in the comics. Jay Yaws would know. And so this time he's here in person, so I can just get all those questions out of the way. It's Jay Yaws. Hey, Jay. Hey, Andy. Thanks for uh, having me and for that uh, wonderful introduction that I hope I can live up to. And I hope I live up to that every single day. Believe me, because it's a lot of pressure. Uh, you can. I believe in you. <laughs> I have the utmost faith. You'll be great. Um, but it's true. And so and you also inspired this episode, Jay. I did. Because in your in your spare time, question mark, um, you write for Batman News, which I always enjoy your articles. Okay. And you recently did one and it was random, but in the best possible way where you ranked every toy in the Batman and Robin toy line. I did, yes. And yes, it is spare time. Uh, it is not my day job to write about Batman or comic books or toys or action figures, anything like that. Much to my dismay, but also... A man can dream, though, can't he? Can dream, yeah. I mean, the, you wake up on your actual dream at night and then, you know, dream during the day of, you know what? I really, really wish that I could write about, you know, 47 different uh, Batman action figures and get paid... Uh, thousands of dollars for it but uh alas it's not in the cards but it's still a lot of fun maybe someday i have faith um but in the meantime it's still fun to talk about it in our spare time we are going to talk about it more in just a second but first i also have to give a shout out to our pals over at manscaped who are kind enough to sponsor holy batcast we love them they've been very good to us and you guys have been very good to them so thank you to everybody who has gone shopping and bought some stuff over at manscaped and so manscaped wants to talk to you about fall they say fellas can you smell the pumpkin spice in the air you probably can if you've been to Andy's house because almost <laughs> everything in my cupboard is pumpkin spice right now. But if you haven't heard, it's fresh face fall and nobody else can give your face the love it needs other than our friends at Manscaped. The folks who changed below your belt are here to help with your brand new handyman electric face shaver designed to give your face that smooth finish without the mess of a wet shave. It's the perfect tool for men with all beard lengths. Whether you're lining well, whether you're lining up your neckline, huh? Lining up, okay. Yeah, whether you're lining up your neckline or taking it all off to feel the autumn breeze, make sure you join the nine million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Head over to manscaped.com and use the promo code Batscaped for twenty percent off and free shipping. 
don't be a bad apple this year. Choose Manscaped. And I've told you recently, their handyman is a relatively new product. So it just came out a few months ago, and I already love it. It's just a handy dandy, super easy, super convenient face shaver. It's small, it's compact, it's slick, and it's great for those mornings where I. Uh, I don't even want to say I'm in a rush where I'm just too lazy to shave for real because I just hate it. And so I grab the handyman, I clean it up, I can still look nice, and I'm done in like two minutes. It's great. So the handyman is awesome. I love it. Even Jamie likes it, and he said that these shavers never work for him. So I highly recommend, but all their stuff is great, honestly. No matter what you're in the market for, Take a look at manscaped.com. Look at their grooming products. Look at their deodorant and their face wash. And of course, their trimmers. They have multiple different kinds of trimmers for above the waist and below. And they're all awesome. So do some shopping. Get yourself something. May celebrate fe- fresh face fall. Yeah, fresh face fall. Oh my God. They're making me work for it. Um, they also have fresh ball fall. Eat with however you want to celebrate. I'm not here to judge. Do it. Um, so go check it out. And I think you'll be happy with the products. But if you're going to make a purchase, again, please use that promo code BATSCAPED. It's going to get you that 20% discount. It's also going to get you free shipping. And they are then going to know that you heard about them through us. And it helps us out too. So it's a great thing. You buy some nice stuff for yourself. You save a little bit of money. And then Holy Batcast, we get supported in in that process. So thank you guys. Everybody who bought something. Thank you. Go take a look. If something strikes your fancy, make that purchase. If it doesn't, that's okay. Check check again later. But they have more stuff coming, and all their stuff has been awesome. So I think you'd be very happy. Very nice. yeah. yeah. All right, there you go. And, uh, Manscaped.com. I can, I can vouch for your uh, pumpkin spiciness because anytime you post anything, I can smell the pumpkin spice through my phone, Andy. Oh, perfect. See, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> As we speak, I literally am burning a pumpkin candle. <laughs> because it's the season we're so you know like it's the time we got to celebrate every chance we get absolutely all right so anyway uh as we were saying you published that article and you said and i quote this is the best thing i've ever written <laughs> and i i agree it was it was a masterpiece you. you have you have done it it will go on your epitaph <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. No notes. A plus. <laughs> he once uh, wrote a list ranking every Batman and Robin toy. Um, and was also a loving husband and father, I guess. See, I, that stuff, <laughs> fine, but whatever. Um, I mean, I, I loved how extensive it was, and it was a perfect thing to like peruse in my free time. And so I loved it, and I was like, you know what? This would be fun to talk about. So... I pinged you and I was like, hey, man, that was really fun. Why don't you come on the show and we can pick some of our favorites to discuss? We can't talk about all because what did you say? It was 47. I that that was an arbitrary number, but it I mean, it was something like it was something like that. Yes, it was. It was. was, Yeah. So like going through the entire list would just be exhausting and too much. And ain't nobody got time for that. So we picked 10 highlights and then people in their spare time can go to Batman News, find the article which I think it is called just ranking the Batman and Robin action figure line, right? Something, yeah, very yeah, something, straight- something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Straightforward. And so that way they can see all the stuff we didn't get a chance to talk about here. And that way, you know, everybody wins. We get to highlight some of our favorites, but there is so much more to enjoy. Yes. And I mean, the inspiration for this was the lack of news. Cause yeah. you know, we need needed, needed content to post. And uh, my friend, Andrew, who put together the uh, review comic review team for Batman news, uh, nine years ago, gosh, the, if, if you can believe it, I've been doing this for nine years. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, but he and I were just talking and uh, we were like, you know, that might be a fun idea to post just funny, just, uh, you know, rank all the Batman and Robin toys. So I found out about this uh, uh, action figure archive website that has so much i mean it's it's almost ridiculous it's ridiculous and it's gotten to be bad because after i did this one i've got four or five other posts scheduled and i'm working on an additional five batman line posts so i uh, just pending how 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 these perform but um there there're just so many batman toys that are awesome, ridiculous, and you know, awesomely ridiculous. That it's just, it's just fun. 
like you said, it's just, you know, really, really easy and simple. And uh, they're really not taking me too long. So it's not a big time suck. It's just there are a lot of toys. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's still a bit of an undertaking. Yeah, well, I mean, so here's the thing on your list, whatever, 47, let's just say 47, because that sounds right. Um, is that every toy that was in the line? If it was on this website, I included it and it really does seem to be every it's every toy I recognized. OK, uh, you, know, you know, 20 got what? What is it? 24, 25 years on something like that. Um, and um, 26, I 26. Think. Gosh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, man. Um, it's every toy I recognized, some of which I had back you know, back then. Um, and then even stuff that I didn't. Um, so I, I feel like it's pretty comprehensive. And it feels like it was, but I, you know, I didn't, I don't know because when Batman and Robin came out, it was just after my first year of college. I actually wasn't really looking forward to it. Cause you know, I didn't like Batman forever and Batman and Robin looked like more of the same. So I wasn't all that excited for it. And so my age, plus the fact that I was not super into this version of Batman, I didn't pay any attention to the toys. And so obviously I saw them in passing and I've seen some of them through the years on eBay or at comic shops or at conventions, things like that. So I've yeah. certainly seen some in, in just in passing. But in 1997, I wasn't digging through the Batman and Robin toys. So there are certainly ones on here where I was like, yep, never saw that before. <laughs> That's <laughs> random. Um, so cool. All right. Well, let's let's get the party officially started. Let's talk about just 10 of our favorite toys from the Batman and Robin action figure line. Blasting into action with the secrets of the Batcave, Batman and Robin. Mr. Freeze launches a shivering shockwave, but heat scan Batman deploys his thermal sensors. His ice pummeling projectile makes Freeze sweat. Next, Robin's ice armor and blade launcher make Freeze pay. And now, the blazing Bat Hammer lights up the night, ready for the final fight. The Bat Hammer powers up to send the frozen feed to a massive meltdown. The secrets of the Batcave are yours, Batman and Robin. The secrets of Bat Hammer eat so simple, the batteries not included. And when we say 10, there are favorites because some are good, some are bad, some are weird, some are random. We just, and it was honestly, it was harder to narrow down to only 10 because there was a lot of cool, weird, weird stuff here. Yeah. I mean, we kind of compared notes just so there wasn't any overlap. Uh, I know for certain that uh, at least one of the ones that you picked is one that if we were just going to do like a straight top 10, uh, it would be on my top 10. So I didn't pick that one um, so that you could pick that one. Um, well, thank you. But then there are just some really bizarre ones that, because you had the idea, let's let's talk the weirdest, let's talk the coolest, let's talk the actual best. So, so I mean, it, it was fun kind of picking, uh, you know, a little a little potpourri of of the the best weirdest and um all of the above from the exactly well because just the best i mean that's kind of boring like just yeah, the yeah. ones that stood out for whatever reason good or yes. bad yes so Absolutely. all right so yeah so we did choose 10 of our faves and again i do recommend all y'all out there if you're batman fans and you're trying to procrastinate for the day go find jay's article on batman news and just uh yeah enjoy scrolling through 47 Batman toys from 1997 and there are some fun ones in there. There are some random ones and we can't get into all of them here. So there's some still, still some gems to uncover when you do that. Yeah, but let's talk about the 10 we did choose. So Jay, you're the guest. Which one do you want to talk about first? So I think I'm just going to go in the order that we have them on here. Uh, that works for me. Our little list. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of put them in the order of like weirdest to best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Think that's a, I think that's a good way. We can kind of qualify them as we want. But this, I feel, is definitely one of the weirder ones that is still kind of cool, but de it, it's it's kind of it's everything about the toy line, any Batman toy line, the movie itself. Uh, it, it's everything good and bad about all of that rolled up into one set. And it is the Challengers of the Night Batman and Robin set. So it's a two pack. Obviously, it comes with Batman and Robin, uh, which isn't, you know, too weird. Uh, so far, I'm with you. Yeah. The weird 
part of this is the uh their suits are like chrome plastic and really really bright colors so robin has this like chrome silver like a the night wing bird symbol on his chest which in itself looks kind of cool but then the rest of his body suit is this like jungle green mm-hmm. which okay with robin i can kind of go there but even still it it doesn't match the movie at all. certainly not in the movie he doesn't wear any green in the movie no. if if anything these look almost kind of inspired by those uh you know freeze suits from the end but even then it's not that's not what this is because um, Batman has even more of this chrome silver all over him and he's like a bright blue and the uh, the capes that they each have are just black. So it's like they didn't go all in with this because the capes that were still just, you know, recycled from some of the other regular figures, but then they're going and incredibly extra and gaudy and you know bougie with their with their suits being all you know technicolor and bright and shiny and chrome and then it comes with this bat shaped laser net accessory and then two small black grapple launchers and i mean it's it's bizarre like i said it's almost cool it makes sense the set because you know batman and robin you kind of want batman and robin Mm -hmm. but like with any Batman toy line or really any toy line, you know, you've got weird random colors um, uh, to, you know, just kind of go along with the uh, the movie itself. It's bright and loud. And I mean, it's really just missing some neon and it would look exactly like something from, a you know, one of the Schumacher Batman films. And then it just has these weird random accessories. So, you know, that's that's my first pick for the weirdest yeah, I think it's an excellent pick. Thank you. Because you. you're right, a Batman and Robin 2 pack makes perfect sense. Of course you want that. And if you look at the Batman Forever line, one of the best packs was the Batman and Robin oh, 2 yeah. pack because it was the most film accurate and exactly. you got them both. It was great. And here it was like they could have done that. And dare I say they should have done that. But instead, they were like, no, like make Robin bright green, make Batman bright blue and not like the green or blue that you are used to seeing these characters in just a completely off color for both of them and make them shiny metal and give them a big old plastic laser net. And away we go. So, yeah, it's definitely it's weird. I can't decide if I love it or hate it. Yes. If someone got this for me, I would probably give them a hug because they would know that I would appreciate it for that very reason. It's like, I don't know if this is the greatest thing ever or the worst thing ever. (laughs) You know what? It's better than, you know, just some, you know, off the shelf, just another standard Batman figure. At least this is, you thought of me to get this for me. And I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, Andy, when you said, you know, they could have done it, but they didn't. There's a lot of that in Batman and Robin. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's, yeah, they, so you're right. It is true to the spirit of the movie of like just a big WTF. They could they could have made some good choices, but in instead, but why they exactly when why you can why? make a bad one? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, well, so I I want to start because this is I think exactly it is. Here's what's crazy: Batman and Robin, the movie, which I will say, like I have certainly like. I have a soft spot for it these days, unlike back in 97 where I was totally not, not excited for it. Now I, I kind of appreciate it for what it is. You know, um, I'll never claim it's a great movie or anything, but like I'll put it on on occasion. You know, I feel that way about both Schumacher movies. Um, but Batman and Robin, the movie part of the way they made it was to make it more quote, toyetic, more stuff that they could make toys out of. And so Batman and Robin is full of stuff you can make toys out of. There's vehicles, there's multiple costumes for everybody. And what's crazy going through your article and the entire toy line, it is shocking how few toys actually reflect what was in the movie. Yeah, for real. (laughs) Like there is not a true to the movie Batman figure in the line anywhere yeah the closest is i don't even remember the name of it but it's uh it was somewhere near the uh, the top of the ranking but still i knocked it a few points because it doesn't have a cape it has like a weird 
like wing backpack thing. Yeah, but yeah. no actual cape. The rest of it looks fine, but 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 still, yeah. There's nothing that is just a screen accurate Batman. It is yeah, confounding. It's crazy, and 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 Poison Ivy is the same. Like they give Uma Thurman a couple. I mean, I don't know about great looks, but very interesting looks over they the top her looks. They a gorilla suit and they didn't make that a thing. And, and the toy they made or the toys they made of Poison Ivy were the most just plain and boring yeah. Poison Ivy toys. I'm like, you gave her multiple costume changes to make toys out of and you didn't make toys out of any of them, you crazy people. So, yeah, it's shocking. It's shocking. And, <laughs> and, and like, like you said, at the end of the movie, they're all in their ice suits. I didn't see any figures with the ice suits. Yeah. Like I said, these are like the closest you get to it. Yeah. And it's not even so anyway, that's I just love the irony of like, hey, for Batman and Robin, make it toyetic. And he does. And then they don't make toys out of any of it. Joel it's crazy. Walker, rumor has it would start each you know, shot, each scene by saying, remember, we're making a toy commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just crazy. Like he gave them plenty of stuff to make toys out of and then they didn't. They, they couldn't be bothered. It's nuts. Speaking of couldn't be bothered. Let's talk about my first choice. All right. <laughs> so my first choice. This, see, now this is the wonderful thing, because I didn't even know this happened until you wrote this article. Neither did I. <laughs> And so this is the Batman and Robin triple action vehicle set. And why is it triple action? You might say, well, because it's a Batmobile that can transform into the bat wing that can transform into the bat boat. And if that sounds familiar, it's because they are the Batman forever versions of all three. So what they did is they took the Batman forever toy of the Batmobile that transformed into the bat boat and the bat wing and just tossed it in a Batman and Robin box and sold it again. And they didn't make any changes to it except the box. Yes. They didn't, they didn't add glowy paint. They didn't make different colored vehicles. No, it is the exact same vehicles and parts in a red and black box instead of a green and yellow box. This is hilarious. I love that this happened. And you've just got to think that they're like, you know what? We have so many of those left over from 1995. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> let's just box them up and sell them again. <laughs> so as for like the toy itself, it seems pretty cool, especially mm-hmm. back for Batman Forever, because it makes sense, right? All three of those vehicles are in the movie. And here you only have to buy it once. Yeah. But to repackage it and just shamelessly sell it again with the Batman and Robin logo cracks me up. When I saw this, I was very tickled, and that's why I had to bring it up. Yes, I mean there there are even a couple of figures in the line that are just repaints of uh, some of the uh, Batman Forever uh, uh, toys. But I mean, this, like you said, is just shameless. Shameless. They, Couldn't be bothered. They did not bother her one bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, see, but I and if I was a kid when this came out and I got this as a present, I'd be like, those aren't the ones from the movie. I know. So, yeah, I mean, I, w- I would be bummed too. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, okay, got the value here, but I mean, you know, I'm at least a purist enough that I want it like it is in the movie. Exactly, I agree. So um, I thought this was a hoot. <laughs> I love that I that we now know it happened. It's also worth noting that like you, you pulled all these photos for your article. Um, I pulled the ones we were going to talk about. So I will also post all the photos to the Holy Batcast Facebook page. So that way- You don't have to Google them. You don't have to find them on your own. They'll just be right there. So as we're talking about them, you can take a look too, because yes, it's nice to hear us describe it, but you're going to want to look at them. Yeah. yeah. If you're not following along with the article, which, you know, I mean, I listen to podcasts while I'm driving and doing things. So so I I get it. I get it. I listen to podcast driving and it's, it's stuff like this where they talk about some old product or something they found on eBay or whatever. And I make a mental note that like, as soon as I'm not driving, I got to Google what it looks like because I actually want to see it. Oh yeah. I uh, stops, uh, stop lights, stop signs. Yeah. I'm, I'm pulling that stuff up to see if I want to to grab too. Yep. Um, all right, Jay, what's your next choice? So my next choice is a surprisingly awesome figure. I think we could uh, go with that. It is frostbite, you know, just nameless random henchman of Mr. Freeze, but it is actually really cool. Uh, you know, 
I'm not going to say no pun intended because you should intend your puns. Uh, you know, especially yeah. when it comes to this movie and the subject we're, matter. We're not cowards here. We intend our puns. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's actually it, it has a really cool sculpt. Um, he has what looks like, you know, hockey pads and uh, like a scarf. And, he is wearing hockey pads. He, yeah, he's wearing hockey pads or pants as the internet seems to think he's saying i've never what? said that you've never heard that like no some, some people think he's saying i'm not wearing hockey pants and no that's not, not correct it is 100 percent from the very <laughs> time i saw the movie i knew he was saying hockey pads huh all right well because the a, internet, they, hear, they never let you down do they yeah a i can hear it and b the guys were wearing hockey pads that but, yeah there you go the context clues folks any, anyway anyway He's uh, wearing some hockey pads, has a nice scarf, and comes with uh, uh, two, uh, you know, pretty neat. Um, I guess it's a missile launcher, but instead of missiles, it shoots uh, hockey sticks, which he can also hold in his hands. I just was like, you know what? For what would no doubt be a peg warmer back in 1997, because no kid's going to want frostbite. They're going to want. Batman, Robin, Mr. Freeze, even Bane, maybe even Poison Ivy, Batgirl. They're going to want those. Uh, but nobody's chomping at the bit to get Frostbite. But I think it's a pretty awesome figure and uh, surprisingly holds up better than most of the other Batman and Robin figures in the line because it at least looks like something that could have come from the movie. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, I'll tell you who would want a frostbite. It would be me because I'm with you. I love it. Yeah. And I just and and I, I like it so much that I'm looking on eBay because that's what happens whenever we have episodes like this. Oh, yes. Is it leads to eBay, which leads to mistakes. <laughs> but yeah, I can find a loose frostbite, you know, about 20 bucks. Oh, here's a really loose one for only six bucks but he has no accessories i need the accessories i don't need him to be on the package but i i need him to be complete um so yeah you can find frostbite for a relatively good deal and i am tempted because i'm with you on this one i love this figure it's so cool yeah, yeah i know like this is the equivalent of like the stormtrooper figures where i wouldn't want just one frostbite i would want like 10 frostbites for batman and robin to fight exactly and so yeah like and you're right it's I, I, yeah, I don't know if it's 100% accurate to the movie, but it's pretty close <laughs> and it's cl a lot closer than ironically most of the Batman and Robin figures in this line. And so it is cool that they made a figure of Mr. Freeze's henchman and he looks great. So, yeah, I actually really like this one. I think yeah. it's one of the best ones. I know when I was going through and uh, how I would do it as I would just download all the images onto my computer and then make folders of like each like each 10 a uh, group of 10 and I'd start moving them around like, okay, well that's going to be, you know, in the top 10. And when I was done with that, I'd go to, you know, 11 to 20 and everything. Uh, when I was doing the top 10, I was like, you know, frostbite's got to be in there. Cause he's awesome. He's and, cool. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I haven't looked at it much since I posted. I'm pretty sure spoiler alert. He's uh, number two on that list. So I think he was, yeah, I, think, he, I think you had him at number two and I'm he, not even mad at you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not mad at me either. I'm going to be <sighs> mad at me if I have to, you know, find one and spend $30 for it. But, you know, I well, yeah, I mean, if you want just the figure with no accessories, you can get them for dirt cheap. If you want all the accessories, you're looking at 25 bucks or so. Um, but there's a couple mint on card that are like 30, which is not terrible. I've spent more on dumber stuff. So, you know, I know. Right. Like, so I, I think Frostbite's a great investment. We're going to pay with Har pay for Harley's college with a frostbite <laughs> figure. Get two so you can take one off, uh, off the card and then uh, the other to save. I know. Well, and that's why like, I was like, oh, I don't, I'm not, I'm fine with, with buying loose ones because if it's on the card, I have to leave it on the card. But if I buy a loose one, I can, you know, set them up, put them on the shelf and everything. So yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see what kind of eBaying happens after we're done recording. <laughs> uh, but for now, we got to keep talking. Yes. Okay, so Frostbite. There you go. Excellent choice. Love it. It's a good one. It's a little bit of a dark horse, but like, it's great. Yeah. All right, I guess I'm sticking with vehicles, but this vehicle at least is from the movie. And that's why I picked it is because it's not just from the movie. It's directly from the movie. It's one of those times where 
Joel Schumacher said, yes, I will put a new vehicle in this movie. It won't make any sense. We won't know where it comes from. It'll do very little, but at least you can make a toy out of it. And they did. And it is the Ice Glow Bat Hammer. And I mean, that's really not any worse than the beloved, awesome, and completely impractical Bat Ski Boat from Batman Returns. So can't really fault him for that. I mean, I love the Bat Ski Boat. I have a Hot Wheel of it hanging up. (laughs) I love the Bat Ski Boat. Um, But you're not wrong. It also just kind of comes out of nowhere. But it's really damn cool. Um, I always thought Bat Hammer was a very odd name for this vehicle. Me too. But whatever, that's what it is. So this is the Ice Glow Bat Hammer right from the movie. So at the end, when, you know, we're we're cruising into the climax and everybody is in a new vehicle for reasons. And this is the this is the one that happens. This, this is the reason. Yep, this is <laughs> the reason. Toy. We got a toy. So um again, much like most of the movie, now I kind of have a soft spot for the bat hammer just because it's just like so random that it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. And you could get your very own bat hammer and it glows. It lights up with flashing strobe lights and it shoots missiles. And so there were a few fun vehicles that were in your article, but I picked this one because it's actually from the movie, uh, unlike so many of the other vehicles that were part of this line. And so I was like, well, good. At least they made the bat hammer. They didn't make that weird, like giant fan thing that Robin was driving. I don't know what that did. Did they? Yeah, and I think it shoots the fan off of it. I can't remember what it's called. Like the jet hmm. blade, I think. I think I want to say it was called. Okay, well, I'll have to check for that. I didn't remember. I don't remember it, but it, it also could have looked different enough from the movie version that I didn't realize it was the same thing. Yeah, you didn't recognize it with the fan shooting. Maybe. Off. So, yeah, I, you're not to blame there. Yeah. So, anyway, the Bat Hammer deserves a shout out because I do think it still is one of the most random vehicles in a Batman movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I respect it for that. Where yeah, I mean, it's it's a solid choice. It's it's a cool looking toy. Yeah, and that's and that's what it was there for. Well, and I remember going on the WB tour, and they had that big, huge warehouse full of Batman vehicles, and the Bat Hammer was there. And I remember standing there with some some good friends, fellow Bat fans, and we were looking at the Batman and Robin vehicles, including the Bat Hammer, including the Red Bird, including. Um, Batgirl cycle and all those. And we're like, you know, for as much as we didn't like these in the movie, seeing them in person, pretty cool. (laughs) Like the Redbird cycle is actually pretty cool. I mean, it is. It's yeah, it's I'll give that one a pass. It's not to blame the cycle, right? It's, you know, there were other other issues. But yeah. So anyway, the Bat Hammer, I love that they actually made a toy out of it. It looks pretty darn good. And you're right. It's a cool looking toy. I wonder if the wings fold up so it can block you know mr freeze's ice rays oh man i sure hope so yeah the the package doesn't say so it doesn't say all it says is is the fresh the flashing strobe attack (laughs) so it it can't deflect mr freeze's rays but it can give him an epileptic seizure there you go go. and that's how you defeat evil (laughs) victories in the preparation (laughs) so the ice glow bat hammer i dig it all right my next uh, speaking of uh, eBay purchases, I am going with the uh, very best Batman figure in the line that was not actually part of the main toy line. It is a Batman figure that could only be obtained by mailing in proofs of purchase and a certificate from Fujifilm. It is the Batman Fujifilm special. Um, it's just a Batman figure that comes in a clear plastic bag. He's pretty much solid black with a silver bat symbol on his chest. So even then, it's not 100% screen accurate, but it's the closest that you get from any of the Batman (laughs) toys that were released. And it's pretty cool, and it can be got, you can get it for pretty cheap on eBay too. I think I spent like 15 bucks. And um, it's it's sitting on my shelf now. Like I, like I said, I'm it wasn't even eBay window shopping. I went expressly to find this figure to see if I could afford it and wanted to buy it. And sure enough, I did. It's just cool and weird because why are you going to put the best Batman as a mail away exclusive? But again, I'm not that mad at it because it's just a cool figure. Yeah. I speaking of things I had no idea existed. 
didn't know about this, don't remember this, but so, yeah, so random that Fujifilm had an exclusive where he could get this figure. It's it's a little plain for my tastes, but I guess I do err more on the side of like plain versus extra. Mm -hmm. And so I do appreciate how straightforward it is, but it's almost a little too straightforward. But you're right with a a line that has so many that don't look like anything in the movie. It's kind of a nice change of pace where it's like, no, a nice, simple Batman figure. He's in black. He has a silver emblem and that's it. And I mean, considering the the suit from the movie is pretty bland and plain, it's that, you know, just blue, that dark blue head to toe, uh, the little pop of the silver bat symbol, I, I'm not I, I'm not going to be mad about it because it gives it a little bit uh, extra there. That's that makes it a little more interesting. But um, I mean, again, just so weird that that's the best Batman you can get. And uh, I know you're not finding it at Walmart or KB Toys. Exactly. Got got to get your Fujifilm. Exactly. Which, uh, you know, that that gave me some flashbacks too with this. Yeah. Cameras and things that they don't make anymore. I know. Hey, Jay, guess guess what's on its way to my house right now? Uh, the Batman Fujifilm and or Frostbite. Frostbite. Frostbite's nice, on its way. Nice, nice. Yep. Right. I found a loose one with all accessories in perfect shape for less than 20 bucks. So now he's mine. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and uh, tell Catherine I'm sorry for bringing this up on your house. That's OK. She'll she'll support me. She's okay. very good like that. Okay. All right. So the very random Fujifilm Batman from Batman and Robin. We didn't know, but now, you know. I'll take a better picture of it too to send to you so you can put it on Facebook. Cause, cause Do you have one? Uh, I, I mean, I like I said, it's on my shelf right now. So I'll, oh, I'll, okay, all right. I'll so take one and send to you because yeah, it's kind of hard to see it in the plastic. Yeah, it's a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But cool. All right. So what do I got next here? Oh, I'm going with a playset next. Now, here's a thing. Looking at looking at my choices, and. I've always had a soft spot for Mr. Freeze, but I've always had a soft spot for like ice villains and ice characters. Like I loved Iceman on Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And when I was, you know, on X-Men, I loved Iceman and I've always loved Mr. Freeze. And I like Captain Cold. I don't know. I like ice. I just think it's very cool. (laughs) Pun intended. But also like just aesthetically pleasing. I love the look of ice, whether it be in a comic book, a TV show, a cartoon or a movie. And so it is one of the things I like about Batman and Robin. Is there something I just like about blue glowy ice? There's a lot you can do with it. You know, really cool design stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So I I just find it pleasing to the eye. And so the place that I wanted to talk about is called the Ice Fortress. Now, it's not exactly from anything in the movie, but it's something that Mr. Freeze definitely could have had or could have made at any point in the movie. And it's just like a large, it's almost like a bunker, right? Like an ice bunker uh, with weapons on it and projectiles and everything. And so it's a pretty straightforward playset where Mr. Freeze can be behind it and be attacking Batman and Robin and Batgirl. But I just love that it's all that translucent, blue ice material that looks so cool because it also looks cool in a toy and there were a couple that were ice themed obviously because of mr freeze but for some reason this one jumped out at me just because i think there's a beauty in the simplicity of it's just this bunker that he built for himself and you can use it to play with your toys yeah this would be the one that uh, probably didn't cost a lot you know maybe 10 15 bucks and you know if you you want to get uh something uh let's say you you know you're a 10 year old kid getting one or two figures and you want something else but you know you can't afford the triple action vehicle you know nonsense or whatever um you can get the ice fortress and then you got something that your uh, action figures can play on so uh, and not break the bank or, you know, break the parents bank, I guess. So you're uh, right. That's exactly what it is, is it's like it's special because it's still a play set, but it is a very um, it's a very reasonable play set where you're right. It's a very modest place. It's modest. There you go. That's a perfect word. So, yeah, and I, like I, I just typed this into eBay and this one is not coming home to me. Oh, too much. He's a little pricier. He's a little pricier. Um. The, the ones in box, the cheapest you'll get it for is like 90 bucks. Oof. Um, there is a loose one for like 60. 
but even so i don't i don't need it that bad yeah yeah i think we can pass but there's some like really like you know some really mint ones that are 150 200 <laughs> so this one i will just admire from afar you're welcome catherine if you're listening to this <laughs> um but i i will just admire it from afar but i love it and, and you're right this is the one where it's like oh you know you want to give someone something more than an action figure but you ain't committing to the massive old huge thing this is a nice little middle of the road play set and i think it's i think i just love the design of it again there's something cool about how s- simple and straightforward it is yeah, exactly so my next pick is also a playset. Uh, it's even smaller and even more simple, simpler. Um, but it is the Arctic Gotham Micro Playset. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's uh, got some uh, uh, tiny, tiny little, uh, uh, you know, Mighty Max Polly Pocket sized figures, and then just a bunch of. Uh, uh, scenes from the movie and i i picked this because it's also something that um you can get a lot of play out of uh for probably you know a uh, relatively little money at least back in 97 who knows how much it's going for right now I, well i could tell you um because guess what i checked do i need to sit down or no up and then sit down again oh really? here's the crazy part this is cheaper than the ice fortress really Yes, I did not see that coming. I thought for sure this was going to be 200 bucks, um, but it's not. There's there's only one available as of this recording. And with shipping, it'll set you back about 95, which oh, it's, it's still that's still a bit much. For it's me. high. But like, honestly, I thought this was going to be higher based on the amount of stuff you get in it. Yeah. And you get a lot. I mean, I was surprised with this because it has facades of uh, what looks like the, uh, you know, the big observatory from the end of the movie. There's a big open ice field uh, that the packaging has Robin fighting Bane. It comes with a Batmobile. It looks like it comes with the freeze missile shuttle thing from the beginning of the movie. Uh, the really, re- wit- I mean, a little sidebar here, but even if you hate this movie, I don't think anyone can deny that the logo for the film is really cool. Batman yeah, the Robin yeah. logo over it. It's awesome. Especially just the red and black, you know, up against each other. It looks, it looks so, so cool. Um, but it has that big logo on it. It has some lush green to, uh, you know, kind of drawn poison Ivy's uh, presence in the film and everything. And there's just so much going on here. Um Everything is, you know, miniature sized and everything, but it looks like it'd be really easy to pack up and then, you know, just take to grandma and grandpa's house or take to your best friends down the street and then just have all sorts of crazy adventures reenacting a bunch of different scenes from the movie. That's what impressed me most about it is. How that's well, that's what's so movie. magical. It's all inclusive. It's not one location. It's all the locations. Yeah, it's, it's Gotham. It's great. It looks like you even kind of get the bat cave at the bottom where the bat. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I, I just really liked this. Uh, I, I used to love these little miniature places. I, I mentioned mighty max earlier. I used to buy those sets all the time. Um, for uh i'm not sure if i got any for batman but i remember star wars had a bunch of them uh that i would get i i used to love these little micro machine you know kind of kind of miniature play sets so uh this definitely took me back even though i never actually had this yeah no this is so cool um and i it was one of those again i i did never seen it before yeah, and yeah. you had two micro play sets in there there was this one and then there was one that was the observatory specifically they were both super cool i and yeah like i just loved how much stuff you get in this and i'll tell you yeah 95 bucks is is steep but it's more tempting to me than the ice fortress was because it's just so neat. So this is a, a find. And right now, like I said, there's only one out there. So if you if you all want it, you better jump on it. Whoever gets it yeah. first. Um, I'm I'm trying to not. So I'm I'm being good. I have self-control. We bought way too much for Halloween. But this is tempting because it's really neat. And you're right, it totally takes you back to that time. Uh and so it, what, what, what's interesting though is I don't have a good frame of reference as to how big this actually is. Yeah, I mean, it's... It could be really small or it could be large because there's a lot in it. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it would be, I don't know. I mean, definitely, uh, 
it looks like it'd probably even be bigger than that uh, Ice Fortress playset, just uh, with how much stuff there is and how wide the box is. Uh, if if not at least comparable to that. Yeah, for sure. So that is so cool. Um, I really like it, yeah. but I don't need to spend money on it, yeah. but it's neat. It's really neat. Come on. So, all right, good find. Hey, Arctic Mark Gotham Patrick. micro play set. Oh, man. All right, so what do I got next year? Uh, we're going to action figures now. I got my vehicles through and my play set, and I'm into action figures. And uh, the next one I chose, it is a Mr. Freeze action figure. And there was a surprising number of different Mr. Freeze figures. Yeah, and like it's weird because I was thinking, oh, they and because he's a villain, they are probably only made like two or three of them. Uh, but there were like five or six. And the weird thing was, as I was pulling them up, I remembered every single one of them. So I was just kind of conflating a couple of them or maybe just underestimating how many they did. But there weren't any that were surprising. I remembered seeing all of these action figures. I yeah, for sure. Had forgotten there were that many. <laughs> I know there were so. And what's crazy is like, yes, there were some that were very Arnold and some that were very not. And they were all part of the same line. Yeah, and like none of them are really bad either. I mean, they're no, all no. I, I I liked them all. So the one I picked because there were quite a few options, um, was the Jetwing Mister Freeze because it kind of felt like the best of all worlds. Yes. I almost picked just the straightforward generic Mister Freeze, but the one that looks like Arnold because. I will say, as we're going through these, and this has always been true for me, is when it comes to toys, I always wanted the one that looked like the movie. I didn't yes. want the variations. I didn't want the weird colors. I, I wanted the one that looked like the movie. And so same thing here. This one looks like Arnold, but it looks like Arnold from that big opening action scene where he jumps out of the rocket and he sprouts wings. For whatever reason. Well, well no, oh, because wait, to sell toys. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't agree. I think that one of the most famous things about Mr. Freeze in the comics is his wings. Oh, wait, you're right. You know, I mean, it's like it's it just goes with Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze has wings. Everybody knows that, right? I totally forgot about that. I haven't read that issue. Oh, I, I'm sure it exists. I'll help, let me find it for you. Um, but yeah, so it, it is one of the, <laughs> I, I think it was, I mean, got it. Even at this point in the movie, we'd already known what we were in for, but when Mr. <laughs> Freeze sprouts wings, you, you're definitely like, okay, I, I, I know what I am watching now. What the hell? Um, but I love that there's a toy of it. And, and so it's a good Mr. Freeze figure. It looks like the one from the movie. It looks like Arnold, but it comes with the wings. And so you can reenact that wonderful opening <laughs> to your heart's content and which makes me uh, which brings up a complaint why do i not have sky surfing batman and robin exactly so i can only reenact half of that wonderful scene with our jet wing arctic wing jet wing mr freeze <laughs> gotta get a couple of pieces of cardboard to make them you know sky <sighs> surfboards or whatever y'all um, but no, this one is, it's fun. It's ridiculous. It's, it's exactly what you want. And it is from one of the ridiculous moments in the movie. And I respect that. So I think this was the highest Mr. Freeze figure on your list for all those reasons. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And it comes with a cool little Batman and Robin logo ring too. Oh my God. And I can use that. I can wear that as my wedding ring now. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, hold uh, on, Mr. Freeze. No, I'm just kidding. I <laughs> um, but I will tell you what I what I what I did do as I was going through here is there is a used observatory micro play set mm -hmm. that seems like it's quite a good deal. So I'm just going to leave that window open and look at yeah, that later. Yeah. When add, I have that, time. Add, that, add that to your watch list. Yeah, like that one. I'm like, I'm like, ooh, like because the box is kind of bunged up, which like, I don't care. That's fine. But I, I am unclear as to how complete the contents are. So yes. if the contents are complete, this will also be mine. Sorry, Catherine. <laughs> um, but anyway, so what was my point? Jetwing Mr. Freeze. He's rad. He's stupid. And I love him. Speaking of rad and stupid and we love him. Uh, my number one choice uh, almost feels like kind of a cheat because this is not a figure that is screen accurate at all, which is kind of amazing because it might be the best action figure of this character ever. And that is a Bane. Yeah. He, he looks 
straight out of the comics. Like you cannot do anything to make him look more like a Graham Nolan drawing from Nightfall. I mean, he looks perfect for a comic Bane, not for a Batman and Robin Bane. But I'm not mad about that <laughs> because Batman and Robin Bane, he's not the best looking Bane. We we don't need him. We, we we don't we don't need that. But no, this figure is amazing. I actually had this back in the day. Um, I you don't even need the weird swinging scythe accessory and like the punchy dagger glove thing that he has um he's bane he has a tube of uh of venom and uh yeah that's that's all you need and uh i mean it just looks amazing which you would not expect from batman and robin one of the you know biggest eh, let's say missed opportunities of 1997 yeah no kidding um i know that you're right this is a great bane figure and who even cares it doesn't look like in the movie it works for it actually and you're right it's a it's a great figure and what's funny is i feel like over the past few years the bat man fan community has almost rallied around this figure specifically i've i feel like over the past few years i have seen batman fans go you know what say what you will about the movie say what you will about the rest of the toys but that bane figure is pretty sweet and i've seen quite a bit of that and i think rightfully so because it is it's a great bane figure and um yeah i like him a lot that's the discourse i'm here for there you go. Now, See, it's now good. if they had made a screen accurate Bane figure that had the little ice bombs and he could say Bane and a bomb and he came with a trench coat and hat, eh, I might I might uh, bump this one off. But uh, but they didn't. So uh, this this Bane is just fantastic, no matter how it, you look at it. It absolutely is. And it's here's the thing, even though this the subject matter is kind of random and coming at a weird time for no particular reason, in some ways it's good timing because McFarlane is about to release their own line of Batman and Robin figures. Yes. And so I will finally get screen accurate Batman, (laughs) Robin, Poison Ivy, Batgirl, and then Mr. Freeze. Um, And my one disappointment is that I wanted Bane too. Like I wish Mr. Freeze was also uh, a sold on his own. And then the yeah. build a figure was Bane. That's right. He's the build a figure. Yeah. The build a figure is Mr. Freeze. So of course I need them all, but I wish they would have just sold Mr. Freeze. And then the build a figure could have been Bane and man, we'd have had it all. Yeah. Yeah. Or and then, uh, well, maybe they'll do a, a gorilla suit. That could have been a See, maybe they'll do a second line where you can get gorilla suit, poison Ivy. There you go. Um, you can then get the ice versions of Batman, Robin, Batgirl. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, the build a figure is Alfred with McGregor syndrome. Oh man. I was going to say gossip Gertie, but that's definitely better. Yeah. So it, it actually comes with coughing action. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I will buy those cause they actually look really sweet, but in the meantime, you're right. Uh, Bane, he was number one on your list and I don't even disagree because I think that most Batman fans would agree. This is just a great Bane figure. Take the movie out of it. And it's a great Bane figure. Yeah. I mean, if you're hate scrolling this article, which, you know, whatever, at least that still gets clicks to it. Uh, if you're hate scrolling it, but you come to it and say, you know what? I agree with number one. I'm glad that uh, Bane can be the uh, great unifier for all. Of us. He will. He will bring us all together. He will. He will. All right. So my number one, it's almost as good. Almost. Um, almost. Darn close. Um, and that is Iceboard Robin. So this is the most screen accurate Robin figure in the line. And it's not 100% but it's pretty darn close to how he looks in the movie. It's dark blue and red. And I guess he does come with a board. It doesn't really look like the sky surfing board. It looks like something they made up, but it's a board of some type. Um, But I picked this one because it's the one that looks like Robin from the movie. It's the only one. The fact that there is not a Batman that looks like he's from the movie. Um, There isn't a Batgirl who looks like she's from the movie, but at least Robin, you come pretty darn close. He's bluer than what he is in the movie, but that is a small nitpick in what is otherwise a pretty cool Robin figure, especially for this movie. 
speaking of eBay purchases part two, uh, this came in the mail the other day. So I, I oh, heard. so you already did this whole eBay thing as you were writing the article? For, for those two, at least. I've been, I've been looking at a couple other things <laughs> just to see if I want them. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, this is a great figure, like you said. Um, if this is the Robin that came with the Redbird cycle, that might be the best piece in the entire line. If that were the case, I would have, yes, I would have already bought it. But like the Robin that comes with the red bird is still kind of cool. It's like what I think it's like blue and like the yellow bird. Yeah, it's yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I pointed out in the article that at least kind of, uh, you know, gives you some shades of, you know, that one Nightwing suit from the 90s where it had the big yellow like chest plate and everything. So at least it's not he's, you know, orange and purple or something. Um, But uh, man, I mean, I mean, like you said, it's just a great looking Robin. he looks as close to screen accurate as you can get, uh, which I guess they kind of had to make up for because like none of the Robin figures from the Batman Forever line <laughs> looked like Robin from the movie because they right. had a really huge mask. They had the off model uh, R logo on his chest. Um, there were some good ones, but they I mean, still none of them were quite there uh, because they were still working on the old concept art, which may be why we have a better Bane and a terrible Batgirl as part of this line. They were just working with what they had, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I bought this. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to buy another one, maybe loose because uh, it's my kid's favorite. He'll, he'll always go around saying that this Robin suit is his favorite Robin suit from his favorite oh, Batman movie. So interesting. You know, so, you know what, whatever I have to get one uh, for him too, but uh Again, not going to be mad about that because if he wants to follow in uh, his dad's footsteps, you know, that that's just going to bring a tear to my eye. And uh, I will gladly get him a Robin, an ice board Robin. Uh, but yeah, great figure. Great choice, Andy. Well, it was on your list, too. It's a great choice for both of us, but it is. It's the best Robin figure for the uh, for the line. And I might have to look for one of these, too. Um I will also tell you something else I discovered as I've been looking at these things and I've been looking at photos on the back of one of these play sets. It has pictures of all the vehicles and it has the vehicle with the fan. Oh, yeah. But the front half is completely different from what's in the movie. Oh, okay, okay. And so there is another vehicle with a fan that they did sell, but it looks completely different. So like the one that the toy is like pointy and looks almost like a plane, kind of like the bat hammer, but it has a big fan in the back, but the one in the movie, it's like stubbier and smaller and it has the Robin symbol up front. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I was just seeing the fan and I was like, Oh yeah, that's from the movie. Throw it in there. Um, I, I didn't bother to do further research. So, so. well, no, I, but, but I, I had to know and, and I wanted to save people from having to email. Yes. I'll, I'll check it out myself. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but that's why. So there is one that is kind of similar, but is not exactly from the movie, which is a running theme with this entire line. It really is. And as long as we're talking about it, they even built Mr. Freeze and Mr. Freeze mobile that you, that I don't believe they sold a toy of. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I think they had like a little uh, like Hot Wheels die cast size car because I've seen that on eBay before. Uh, yeah. The one with like the free that that's kind of kind of slopes back um, and has like the freeze gun out front. I've seen that. But yeah, they didn't make a toy of that. That's so weird. I know. And I, is it in one of these micro play sets at least? Oh, I just found another complete micro playset though of the observatory that is actually a really good deal. Oh, and it's sealed. Oh, see, the problem with getting it sealed is it's such a it's such a moral dilemma. <laughs> but anyway, sorry, back to the list. Your number one was Bane. My number one was Iceboard Robin. And uh, as, as much as people want to hear me peruse eBay, um, <laughs> those uh, those I think are two great number one spots for this toy line. They're both really rad as well as again, as well as the accurate Mr. Freeze figures are really rad. It just hurts my heart that we don't have an accurate Batman, Poison Ivy or even Batgirl. 
the best uh, the closest you come to poison ivy is one that's in a set with robin and even then it's barely better yeah um and i will tell you this i remember this before we wrap up and move on i do remember these toys being at toys r us before the movie came out and i remember seeing the action figure of batgirl before i saw the movie and she had the cowl Mm -hmm. and i was like oh okay like that's kind of cool that looks like batgirl i mean her hair isn't out of the back but that's okay i get it and then when i saw the movie i was so sad that she just wore the domino mask, except for the co- like the the ears she wore as almost like a miter- motorcycle helmet, and, then and it looked yeah. yeah, and takes them off, and it doesn't look good. And I remember being so sad where I was like, "Damn it, it was in the toy." Toy's been lying to us for years. Yeah, bummer. So awesome. Well, there you go. There are ten <laughs> fun and random Batman and Robin toys. So your list, Jay, you had the Batman and Robin Challengers of the Night two pack where Batman and Robin are wearing bright colors that are also shiny metal. Yes. Then you had the Frostbite action figure that's pretty darn close to the movie. And now I've got one coming to my house. Fantastic. You had the Batman Fujifilm giveaway mail away. Was just a nice, straightforward, no frills Batman figure. Mm-hmm. It'll do you in a pinch. It will in, in a pinch. <laughs> There's the Arctic Gotham micro playset where you can keep all of Gotham in your hot little hands, which we are both coveting severely right now. Yep, yep. Um, well, because I just like the idea of like bringing it over to grandma and grandpa's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then finally, your number one Bane, just a badass Bane figure. Looks awesome. Wish he looks like that in the movie. Mm hmm. Um, and then my choices, I had the triple action vehicle set, which was just a repackaged Batman Forever toy. How dare they? Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you, you clowns. What are you doing? Um, the Ice Glow Bat Hammer, because damn it, there's a Bat Hammer toy, and I love it. The Ice Fortress play set, which is way too expensive. The Jet Wing Mr. Freeze, because even Mr. Freeze can fly in these movies. It's a cool party. It's such a cool party. <laughs> um, and then finally, Iceboard Robin, because it literally is the coolest looking Robin figure in the line and just a cool looking Robin figure regardless. Indeed. And much like Bane, accessories have who even cares? Superfluous. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't even matter. But you got a good looking Robin figure with good colors and a good costume. And he's rad. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Good list, my friend. 25 year old orphan Robin. Yeah, now. Well, at this point, he's like 28. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, so I, I, I love the, you know, ditch the ger- geriatric bat. He's a whole five years older than you. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, so there you go. Ten of the options. And again, for you guys, I hope you all enjoy this random chat and go check out Jay's article and see some of the weird ass stuff they released as part of this toy line. It's so fun. And I do love that, you know, now 26 years removed it to me, it is just fun to look back at these Schumacher movies and have a good time with them because so much has happened since then. We've had so many other versions, like it doesn't even matter anymore. And it's fun. And God, I, I find myself actually nostalgic for these movies now. Yeah. I've, honestly never hated batman and robin i mean it came out when i was 12 so it was still you know Uh, okay and dumb uh i didn't love it like i loved batman forever i recognized it was not good but i've always enjoyed it and i've never been mad at it um it's it's always been watchable to me so even even you know today it's like you know it's it's silly it's stupid We've had better Batman movies since we had better Batman movies before, but it's 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 easily watchable and just to have a good time with it. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad to uh, got to discuss something so random and silly as toys yeah. tied into the two hour and five minute toy commercial. I like it. I like it. So and and yes, for sure. I mean, I I did hate it in 1997 I'll, I'll be honest i hated it but i was 19 i was full of piss and vinegar you know i was <laughs> <laughs> i knew it all and i was mad at everything and now i'm too tired to be mad at it yeah there you go <laughs> i'm just exhausted <laughs> just waiting for the sweet release of death so anyway yes this was fun like that dark <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> always oh, no, um 
Cool. So, all right. Fun looking back at some random Batman and Robin action figures. You've got more articles like this coming. I know you already did the Batman Forever one before we even had a chance to chat. And so I look forward to going through that. I haven't yet, um, but I look forward to doing that. And who knows, you know, maybe we can do another yeah. something like this soon. Maybe, maybe. Uh, all right. As of uh, the, this recording, I should have Batman Returns up within the next day or so. So, Oh, man. Talk about talk about broken promises with that Robin figure. Yeah, gosh, that's <laughs> I have that on my shelf. <laughs> oh, me too. I have I have Robin and Catwoman because they are two. Uh, they're two awesome figures regardless, you know? Yeah, I've had the Robin figure for years. Um, I don't know where like his cape and grapple launcher are, but I still have the figure. A couple months ago, I bought the uh, Penguin Commandos. And those oh, are, I love those. Those, the, those are hanging on my wall on the card. <laughs> so, those are rad. Yeah, they're so cool. So cool. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, I love talking toys. I know Brendan does too. He's probably going to be bummed that he couldn't join this, but maybe next time. All right. Well, we got more Batman to talk about because guess what? We watched the next episode of The Batman. So let's do that. Let's check in on the Batman. Awesome. All right. So um, this one was Pets. Season two, episode six. It was directed by Sam Liu, written by J.D. Murray and Christopher Yost, and it aired on June 18th of 2005. So who has a pet? Turns out Penguin has lots of pets. He's got his old gang of birds. And I'll tell you, Jay, I don't know if you're with me on this. I kind of miss the days when Penguin used birds. You know, me too. And uh, I've been rewatching my, my friend Andrew. We've been rewatching Batman, the animated series. And, uh, uh, oh, which episode was it? There was an episode where Penguin was training birds to sing a song. And it was like, you know, I really, really wish that Cobblepot would be just silly again. So um, on that front, you know, this episode had some uh, had some fun bits to it. it. Yeah, for sure. And it's funny because I feel the same way. Like I miss the trick umbrellas and I miss mm. the birds and I miss all that part of the penguin but when i was a kid penguin was like my least favorite because he was too goofy so <laughs> you know you just gotta wait for it it'll come around but i don't know, I think there's room for both i actually like all ver all versions but at this point yeah it's it's kind of a nice throwback to see him having a gang of birds and i like that each one is different yes you know he has an owl a vulture uh a finch and a crow Yes. Yeah. And he's and a so complete I just, and utter jerk to the crow. Which I know. Well, he's, he's a jerk to all of them, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he sends them out to steal these little. Uh, they look like little pens, but they're sonic pens. They're like a sonic screwdriver, but it's a sonic pen. I think he calls and, it a sonic thingy, which means yeah, sonic thingy. Happened. That's the official name. And so this is something that a scientist has used to communicate with and to control birds. And so he wants to control this big, scary condor thing and it's not working. But what he learns is that the sonic frequency, what it can do is it can control man bat. So man bat picks up on these signals, turns into man bat and Arkham busts out. And man bat also has a new superpower. He has gluey puke. Yeah. Gluey? Yeah, gluey. Glue. Glue puke. That's so gross. <laughs> Which, that's new, right? I didn't, I didn't... For me, that was new. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even know. Can real bats do that? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we're just going to go with cartoons because yeah, uh, last time we went on a whole tangent about what an amphibian is, so I don't oh, even yeah. care. Um, and so, yeah, he... <laughs> that's not amphibians, I can tell you that much. What's that? <laughs> Bats are not amphibians. No, they, they certainly are. aren't. <laughs> um, but uh, whether or not they can have glue puke, I don't think they can. Ah. But Man Bat can for the sake of this episode. So he escapes and Penguin realizes, oh, I can't control the condor, but I can control Man Bat. So Man Bat becomes his pet and starts doing his bidding and stealing for him. And so Batman, uh, he realizes what the Penguin's up to. He sees that he is controlling Man Bat. And so Batman has to stop them both. There's a whole subplot where Alfred has to capture a raccoon in the Batcave. 
<laughs> which is delightful yeah, by the way yeah, yes it's random and delightful i love it so i love that batman's trying to call into alfred for help and alfred's running around the bat cave with a net trying to catch a raccoon but i feel him because there are i got some raccoons in my backyard right now oh, man. and they are always in my trash and all i can ever picture is those raccoons from the great outdoors there's that movie, The Great Outdoors. It's been a long time. So All right. Probably. Anyway, but, but yeah, sure. but I know they're raccoons because on my, <laughs> my fence are these little black raccoon paw prints that are unmistakable. So I'm like, I know who's doing it and I don't know what to do. Like, I'm not going to, I don't want to hurt them. So I'm like, do I just uh, maybe no, latch my no trash can? No has hands that small, guys. I know it's mm-hmm. you. Yeah, I know what they're up to. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Alfred has to capture a raccoon. And so Batman sets a trap for the penguin and man bat because there's going to be a big gold penguin. And I do love that it, it works perfectly. And the penguin's like, how can they expect me not to steal this? Yeah. And yeah, so he and man bat uh, go to steal it. It's full of bowling balls. And Batman has one of the sonic thingies that he manages to reprogram so he can control man bat. And so then he causes man bat to catch the penguin and they both end up back at Arkham and Alfred catches the raccoon, which was what I was most worried about. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank God. So y'all can rest easy. The raccoon has been captured. Raccoon um, is taken care of. Yep. So that was pets. What'd you think? I mean, it's okay. It was, it was fine. Uh, when you said what the episode was on the last episode, that it was a penguin and man bat team up. Uh, I, I think I had the the same thought, like, how are they going to do that? I mean, that's kind of weird and random because it's, it's been a long time since time since I've watched this show. Um, and uh, I did not remember this episode at all. I will say that uh, how they got the team up aspect wasn't nearly as contrived as I thought. I mean, Mm -hmm. they at least tried to explain it. Um, And as much as I love goofiness and silliness, there was a little too much juvenile humor, which again, I mean, even though I'm a grown man, I can appreciate, you know, a poop joke every now and then. But, you know, there was one at the beginning of the episode that just made me roll my eyes. And I was like, okay, that's just a little. Was it when Penguin was yelling yeah. at the, the bird for the poop? Yeah, and he's like, you know, yeah, you can do that outside or whatever, like or indoors or something like that. I don't know. It, it was a little, not necessarily too much, but it it just didn't work for me. Um, but it was okay. I really, really thought the uh, uh, the scene where um, uh, Man Bat is tracking Batman and you get like these sonar glimpses. That, mm, yeah. That, that was really cool. Yeah, I really liked that. And there was not, nothing in the episode that I like absolutely hated, except for Langstrom's voice. Uh, I think he was voiced by Peter McNichol. Uh, that, yeah. From Ghostbusters 2. Every time he spoke, though, I thought it was Cow from the show Cow and Chicken. If you remember that. I never watched it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it sounded exactly like that. Like, um, and just his voice got on my nerves. Um, almost like they were trying to make him like a snooty super dork. That's um, which, okay. I mean, Kirk Langstrom can be, but almost like too far into that. Mm-hmm. But then he becomes like serious, threatening man bat. And it just kind of clashed. Um but um, I mean, like I said, the uh, the scenes with Man Bat uh, tracking Batman and Batman having to, uh, you know, finally uh, get him under control and everything that was really cool. Um, the I mean, most of the Penguin stuff was funny, save for a couple of you know little jokes and everything. Um, I did like the uh, you know his whole conceit of you know how did they expect me not to steal this, and then. Uh, <clears throat> uh batman turning man bat on him uh and yeah i mean the the alfred subplot was only there so that we could have that um uh communications device be disconnected and batman lose lose the signal with alfred so alfred have to put it back together so that was kind of contrived kind of really contrived but i even forgot that that's why it happened but yeah you're right because they get to yeah they it becomes uh Yeah, like it becomes detached, and so Batman can't control Man Bat for a little while, right? Yeah, but I mean, Alfred, you know, reconnects it like immediately. Um, and but it it was still fun. I mean, it it it's not the best episode of the show. Um, it's not the worst. Um, 
uh, like Brendan said, the show gets really good. Like the more it goes along, uh, I had a good time with it. Uh, I didn't dread any of it. Uh, I watched it twice and I had fun watching it both times. Uh, so I was at least entertained throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would put this in the pretty good camp. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. And I was entertained. It's just another one of those where I feel like the story was pretty thin, but I still had a good time with Penguin and Man Bat teaming up. Like you said, like I thought last time, I'm like, I don't really know how that's going to work. And I appreciate how they did it. I thought it was kind of clever. And there were certain things that as the episode went on, I was like, oh, okay. Why did the Sonic thing turn Kirk Langstrom into Man Bat? Why did that happen? Oh, well, I guess cartoons. And then later on, they did at least try to create some sort of logic for it as, as, you know, shallow as it was, they at least gave an explanation whether or not you buy it. I was like, okay, well, at least you guys did think about it. And I appreciate that. So I had fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) For sure. So I had a good time with it. I enjoyed it. You know, I, I do like this penguin. I like this man bat. You're right. I didn't think it it did seem odd to me that Kirk Langstrom was so like, I guess uh, he was like egotistical, which I was not used to where he goes, I'm one of the greatest minds in Gotham. And I'm like, I don't remember Kirk Links from ever being like that, but okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, that was an interesting shift, but overall I thought it was fun. And yeah, I was, I was tickled by the Alfred and raccoon thing. Cause it was just so random. <laughs> yeah, just very goofy, but I like this <laughs> Alfred too. He, he He's a lot of fun. Oh, he's great. Yeah. This Alfred is awesome. So yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly not the best, but I really do like what they're doing in the second season, which is just teaming up different villains to see how it goes. And I think there's a lot of fun to be had with that. So yeah, this one was all right. Yeah. All right. What would you give it for a letter grade? Eh, Probably B minus territory. You know, it's, it's, it's fun, entertaining. Like I said, didn't necessarily hate or dread or, super dislike anything about it but i mean i'm not, I'm not gonna put it up there with uh you know like an almost got him or something from the yeah series it, it was fun it was fun yeah yeah uh i am i'm gonna do to you what i do to jamie i'm gonna say b yeah all right, all right. i liked it a b so a b and a b minus for pets and there's another one so up next time is season two episode seven meltdown and this is an interesting combo that one features joker Hugo Strange and Clayface. I did not expect any of those from the title Meltdown. Right? (laughs) Neither did I. Maybe Clayface. Yeah. (laughs) Very interesting. So that will be a fun one. But this week you get to watch Penguin and Man Bat hang out and it's a good time. You'll enjoy. Yeah. And a record. And also special appearance by Miko from Pocahontas. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, we're not ready to say goodbye just yet because we got to check in with you, fine feathered finks, and crack open the Wayne Manor mailbox. You've got mail. Derek. All right, you want to answer some emails with me, Jay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, see what we got here. First one here is from Ron Massbarger. It says, hey, happy spooky season, Bat family. I hope you're having a wonderful fall and maintaining your health physically and mentally. Oh, thanks, Ron. Yeah. Said a thought crossed my mind. I wanted to hear your thoughts. Who is your least favorite Batman villain, and how would you change them to make them better or more interesting? Thanks, as always, Ron. All right, thank you, Ron, and happy fall to you. Mine is going swimmingly, but it's going too fast. But as it as it does. Um, interesting question. So your least favorite bat villain and what you would do to improve them, Jay. Oh man, that's a tough question. I know. (laughs) It is tough. I know who my least favorite is, but I really don't know how to improve him. Yeah, like I've never been a big fan of Maxi Zeus. Like, I think the uh, concept should be something i love because it's just so silly you mm-hmm. know guy thinks that he's uh you know a greek god and does crimes like that but i've just never jived with any stories with him um really i think the way 
that I would say he could be improved is plop him into like Batman 66. He would fit perfectly in there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much, King, uh, you know, King Tut was Maxi Zeus before Maxi Zeus. Uh, so it could be a bit derivative there. But <clears throat> I mean, do something like that with the character. Just put him in with the uh, Adam West Batman and just kind of roll with it. Um, I can't because <clears throat> I mean, I, I want to believe that even the most forgettable, worst characters, whatever, have something to them that with the right writer um, and creative team, they can have value. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's just hard. It's like, there are some characters that I just hate, uh, but then there are other, other villains like Maxi Zeus that I, I just never, never gelled with. So I guess that'll be my answer for now. Okay. That's fair. Um, my least favorite, and I've said it before, it's Scarface. He just does nothing for me. I just, especially because he is so not formidable. Scarface is a villain that Batman can take out like so easily. And so I never buy it when Scarface gives Batman a hard time because I just think that, no, he's just, he's not much of a challenge. Um, And so, yeah, that's why I've just never liked him. But what would I do to improve him? I have no idea. I don't have a good answer for that. So maybe that's why I'm not writing it. I would have to think about it. But yeah, that's just one that's never worked for me. And so I don't know what I would do to improve him. And then, yeah, like there are certainly like a lot of like C tier Batman villains. But like there's a reason they're C tier is because they're not great. Um, So, yeah, like as far as like the bigger, more you know, the more res- respectable or more well-known ones, I, that's the one that comes to mind, but I don't have a great answer on, on how to improve him. Yeah. I mean, I've never been a big, big ventriloquist fan either, uh, which is crazy. Cause he was created by like my favorite creative team of all time. Um, I feel like he's one of those villains that you can tell like one good story with. And mm-hmm. then, once you've told it, there's really not much you can do without returning to the well. Um, yeah. You know, like the animated series did some good uh, episodes with him, like, uh, you know, Wesker kind of um, um, being rehabilitated, but then being pulled back into a life of crime. I mean, you can do that, but really you can only do that once too. Uh, before. Yeah. Repetitive. Well, and, and honestly, I will say that the, the animated series did the best with him, in my opinion, and they still weren't my favorite episodes. Oh yeah. Mine neither. Yeah. But I think they they did the the most respectable job of trying to to make Scarface work. But yeah, yeah I, I guess I you know I mean maybe it's a bad answer because I don't have a solution. Um, so anyway, sorry, Ron. I, I wish I could be more helpful, but that's what you get for giving us such a challenging question. Yeah, it's a good question though. I good like question. That. No, it's a great question. I I want to think about it, but like most other Batman villains, I at least like to an extent because yes, we love Batman and his friends, but we love the villains too. And so most of them I, I do like, Yeah. yeah. Um. so yeah, I don't, I don't have a great, yeah, great answer. I will say, you know, kind of what we talked about is especially when I was younger and the penguin was goofier, he was not my favorite. Um. But you know, history has taken care of that and have, has made him more formidable by doing the the mob boss version. And and so now I miss some of the more fun elements to the Penguin. But, you know, I think that, yeah, I think a lot of people might have agreed with me. And so that's why the character of the Penguin shifted over the years. Yeah. And I do like mob boss Penguin a lot, too. I like it when he's uh, kind of in over his head, but won't admit it to himself. So he kind of goes way too far and trying to put up a front of menace and everything. So that's why he, you get ones that a uh, penguin that like runs, um, um, you know, gun racketeering and runs, mm-hmm. uh, uh, which in has a nightclub is like the front for that. That's interesting. And I like that, but again, I'm not going to say no to trick umbrellas and penguin commandos either. So, well, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say why not both? Exactly. Those, like, like, like there's no reason that my boss penguin with the iceberg lounge also couldn't have trick umbrellas and a vulture, you know, like, I mean, are you going to question a mob boss if he has trick umbrellas and a vulture? No, am, I'm not. I am. Not. Yeah, I think. Yeah, there's no reason you can't do it all. But anyway, that's its own tangent. <laughs> 
All right, next message here is from Ricky. It says, hey, Holy Batcast, it's been a while. I have a big request. I'd love it if you guys reviewed my adventures with Superman. It's fun, heartwarming, and genuinely a great show. I haven't enjoyed a DC animated show like this since Young Justice. Thank uh, thank you guys for everything you do. Love, Ricky. Um, thanks, Ricky, and I will take that request, and I appreciate it, and I'll add it to the list. I'll tell you, I did watch my adventures with Superman, and I really enjoyed it, too. So... Uh, I will just agree with you in short and say, yeah, I thought it was a really good show and it was a nice surprise and I'm glad you dug it too. Jay, did you watch it? Uh, Copy and paste everything you said. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, it was really good. So, and apparently a lot of people watched it. So hopefully they will get a season two. Yeah. I've heard nothing about a season two, but I did just see something recently that it was the most watched show on Adult Swim or the second most watched show on Adult Swim, something like that. So Hey, I'll take any good news we can. <laughs> uh, I mean, competition is what, like Family Guy reruns? So, you know, Probably. It might be an easy playing field. But, you know. Listen, whatever. listen, I'll take what I can get. A win's a win, my friend. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> As a DC fan, you got to take any exactly. win you can. Exactly. <laughs> um. All right. Next message is from Carrie Vanderberg. It says, hey, Holy Batcast crew, I have a very important question for you pumpkin experts. How do they turn the pumpkins that we use for jack-o'-lanterns into pumpkin pie? While I enjoy carving pumpkins for Halloween, the innards make me gag and the outer shell is hard. So I've never been able to figure out how pumpkin gets turned into what's needed for pumpkin pie. Uh, Could I Google this? Of course, but I would rather ask the pumpkin experts on this podcast. Speaking of pumpkins, what is the Batman themed pumpkin carving design that you've done that you're most proud of? Uh, One year in 2016 or 2017, I carved the BVS logo and it turned out pretty good. All the best, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. Um, Oh, my God. Cooking questions. Ah, I think I know, but I've never made a pumpkin pie from scratch. Jay, have you ever made a pumpkin pie from scratch? I have not. Okay. So my answer is going to be they just blend all the pumpkin parts together and add some sugar and once you have a nice little um puree slurry slurry solution there puree slurry solution whatever i know what i'm trying to say um you put it in a uh, pie tin and then you got yourself pumpkin pie i (laughs) i'd love to see you try that jay and tell me how it tastes uh hard pass (laughs) <laughs> I'm, okay so I'm, I'm not sure so if a, your guess is probably better than mine well i i will make an educated guess because again i've never made one and if anyone out there listening is a cook or a baker and you have made one you can tell me if i'm right or wrong but it's certainly not the innards they still have to scoop out the innards before they make a pumpkin pie and then they slice up the pumpkin and then the outer shell, the hard part, they also have to carve that out. But in between the shell and the innards is sort of a semi soft, semi hard middle thing. Are we going to call that a pith kind of like on oranges and citrus fruits? The, the... Sure. I was going to go with the mantle, like in the oh, earth. OK, there you go. If you're looking at the earth, right, the core is the innards. The crust is the outer shell of the pumpkin. And the mantle is the softer, you know, meat, if you will, right, of right. the pumpkin. And that's the stuff that then you chop up, blend up, puree and add sugar and nutmeg and cinnamon and all that it's stuff. And that's how you make the pumpkin. pie. I love pumpkin pie. This is. Oh, me too. Pumpkin. Me too. Yeah, so I mean, they they do have pie pumpkins, so I'm sure it's something like that. Um, maybe um, how the, they do maybe like baked eggplant. You know, you, yeah. you bake it in the oven so the to soften it up. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So the outer part becomes soft. You can peel it off, and then you can kind of mush everything together. That, yeah, that, I think that makes sense. I think that's how it works. Um, but again, that's just my best guess based on what I what I do know. Yes, I agree. <laughs> have you? Have you ever carved a Batman jack-o'-lantern? Um, I'm sure I have because just the bat symbol is uh, so easy to carve. Uh, I think <laughs> this is going to uh. be a bit of this is going to be a bit of a stretch, but I think the best it wasn't for a contest; it was just for fun. But I think the best Batman-related, in some way, 
pumpkin I've ever carved was, um, uh, you know, the artist Greg Capullo, who uh, drew Batman for uh, Scott Snyder's, uh, you know, New 52 Batman run for the longest time. Of course. Uh, his I, like his avatar is on Twitter and Instagram and everything is just like sunglasses in his goatee. Um, mm-hmm. I, I once carved that into a pumpkin and that, oh. that was the pumpkin that I did. And wow. uh, yeah, I like shared it with him and he, you know, shared it across and loved it. Thought it was great. I met him a couple of years later and told him that that was me. And it was like, Oh my gosh, you're the guy who carved the pumpkin. So that was really cool too. So, uh, uh, you know, that's at least Batman related because Greg Capullo has drawn Batman a couple of times before. Yeah, that's really fun. I love it. Um, so I will say I've never carved a Batman pumpkin to my memory, you know, uh, being put on the spot, but I don't think I ever have. And here's why. I'm a bit of a purist. So if I'm carving a jack-o'-lantern, I want it to be like a jack-o'-lantern face. And so I've done a lot of spooky pumpkins over the years, but I've never done a Batman one. However, asterisk footnote we have a lot of carved craft pumpkins at our home as part of our halloween display and so last year my very crafty very talented wife was carving pumpkins for our display and she needed to mix up the faces and so what she did for me was she carved a long halloween pumpkin where the mouth was the bat symbol and so we have one of those, but the credit goes to Catherine, not to me. I was about to say, that's a that's a good way to have the best of both worlds, traditional and Batman themed. So uh, exactly. So, so so good choice there. Good call. Exactly. So and if I remember, uh, once we have it out for the year, I'll take a picture and I'll I'll post it. But I'll find yep. I'll find the uh, Capullo lantern, too, and send that. Send that Sweet. <laughs> post that. <laughs> Awesome. Next message here. It is from Jim Scroggs. It's a, oh, wow, Jim, Jim. <laughs> I am, it's kind of fitting based on what, the joke I made earlier. Uh, Jim says, when you, when you pass on, oh, dear. <laughs> what DC character would you want to greet you? And what do you think they would say? Jim, it's Friday night. I don't know if I'm ready <laughs> to face my own mortality. Not tonight. Um, whoa, dude. <laughs> Um, okay. I mean, I, I respect the question. I like a challenging question, but oh boy, girl. Okay. So Jay, any thoughts, uh, if a DC character were to greet you in the afterlife? (laughs) So I am a Christian man. So I hope that a DC character does not greet me in the afterlife, (laughs) but if one were to greet me, I would hope it would be Zuriel who was part of Shadow Pact and oh, Justice League because yeah, he's an yeah. angel and that means, you know, got to heaven. And, uh, you know, just say, you know, I don't know. He could say, I once saw Superman wrestle an angel or something. That'd be cool. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let, let's say Zuriel because uh, better than the alternative of uh, like uh, Trigon or Clarion the Witch Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my an- my answer is boring. It would be Batman. I would love Batman to be there to to help me cross over. And oh, my God, what would I want him to say? I would want him to say that. I lived my life like Batman, you know, could truthful, be- with honor, with justice, and that he was proud of me. It could be Adam West and he could say, well done, chum. Oh, yeah. Adam West and Kevin Conroy. That would be a a hell of a way to go. So, yeah, I think I would just I would want some kind words as I passed over and uh, and them telling me that they were proud at, you know, emulating our favorite character. There you go. The best parts of him anyway. Um, All right. We got one last email here from Benjamin. It says, good autumn to the Knights of Spice Pumpkin. I've seen a handful of videos online for different Batman themed pop up restaurants. I think it's great that they put all the effort into anything Batman, but none have personally caught my imagination as they should. Most seem either too fancy or expensive or the activities don't seem too interesting. Overall, I think there's a lot of potential given um, given the budget I'm seeing from the videos. So my question is, what would you guys want to see at a bat themed restaurant? It doesn't have to be a pop up. It could be permanent, nor does it have to be fancy. 
Andy, I know you love a good fast food tie-in, so it could be a fast food joint too. I think the amount of Gotham-based environments, activities, and games you could create is endless. Andy, you also know more than anyone about the theme park level of potential for a restaurant if you wanted to take it that far. Happy fall, brothers of the bat, Benjamin. Um, all right, Benjamin, I love this question. I could, <laughs> I could be busy on this one all night long, um, because I agree with you. You know, I last year um, I had Catherine on because Catherine went to the Batman themed restaurant in London. And it sounded really cool and it looked very cool. But I even thought to me, it seemed too fancy and too subtle. If I'm going to a Batman themed restaurant, I want it to smack me in the face. Like I want to feel like I am there. And the one in London, while if and when we go to London, I'm still going to go. Um, it's tr- it seems like it's like it's like Batman, but with a light touch. It's trying to be classy about it. And I'm like, no, man, like put me in the middle of it. Make it immersive. And I want to feel like I am there. Um, but before I start going wild on it, Jay, what would you want from a Batman restaurant? So this might be cheating for a couple of reasons, but uh, at the end of Kingdom Come in the graphic novel, Oh yes! Bat- Sorry. Yep. Yep. Batman. You know where I'm going with this. Batman, yeah, where you're Wonder going. Woman, and Superman visit a restaurant owned by Booster Gold called Planet Krypton, which is Planet Hollywood, but for DC superheroes. Yes. Other than licensing issues, I do not understand why we don't have that in the real yeah. world. Yeah. I mean, it's not just Batman, so I'm kind of cheating there, and. I mean, it's not my idea. It was already come uh, come up with in the comics, but that would be incredible. Just looking at it in the ending of Kingdom Come looks incredible. Mm-hmm. And we would mm-hmm. all love that. It would be amazing. That's my answer. And I'll probably agree with whatever you're going to say. So take it away, Andy. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I love your answer too. Um, I remember that part of that book and I remember like scouring the pages and same, just being like, Oh God, I would go there in a second. I wish I could go there. Fun fact. Once upon a time at universal studios, Hollywood at their city walk that they had a Marvel restaurant. That was kind of what you were describing. It was sort of a Marvel planet, Hollywood. So in your free time, do a little Google image search. And I, I, I don't remember the name of the restaurant, but may, just put Universal Studios Hollywood Marvel restaurant. It was in the 90s and it was obviously before the MCU. Mm-hmm. So the costumes, the props, they were very comic booky and a little cheesy, but that was part of the fun of it. And okay. and so it's very cool that that kind of existed for Marvel. And you're right, DC should have that too. I, 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 I think I remember seeing pictures of it like i mean yeah what you're describing sounds familiar so i'm at least aware that that was then so i'll definitely look that up yeah it's one of those things that i'm so bummed that i never got to see myself because by the time i got to california it was already long gone yeah um but as far as dc i would go full-on batman and what i would do is like i said make it fully immersive let's not go subtle let's go crazy so the one in london i do love that when you enter it's like you're in wayne manor and so you enter through a hidden bookshelf and you go down the stairs and there's sort of this secret passage i think that is great um so i i would i would probably steal a version of that i would make the facade of the restaurant in wayne manor and the lobby is wayne manor And you go in and it's behind, you know, the entrance is behind the grandfather clock. Oh, yeah. And you walk in. So I would steal that. If I couldn't steal that, I think the other option is to make it police headquarters. Mm. And the lobby is the roof of police headquarters. And, you know, the bat signal is there. And that is the entrance. And then in the restaurant itself, I would do different dining rooms for different villains. So there would be one that is covered in ice. That would be the Mr. Freeze room. And there would be one that is just crawling with plants and greenery. That'd be the poison Ivy room. And then there would be a, you know, like a, the abandoned, uh, fun house. That would be the Joker Harley dining room. And so it'd be a series of smaller dining rooms themed to the different villains. And then maybe the center area could be 
the bat cave mm-hmm. right and then mm-hmm. there would be like portals to each of the different dining rooms and so maybe the the bat cave is sort of the one that unifies them all um so yeah just like totally immersive the characters would be there there would be um you know different paraphernalia you know Mr. Freeze's gun and the Joker's cane and the Riddler's cane and just, you know, all of that stuff. But I would go big on it. And yeah, I think that, you know, it would keep you coming back because you're like, well, this time I want to sit in a different room. And then, yeah, I don't, as far as food, I don't know. I would, I would definitely try to theme the entire menu to Batman and his world. However, and whatever that may be. Right. Vichy the, Swa. Vichy Swa. Absolutely. But like, you know, the Bruce Wayne filet mignon, right? Or uh, yeah, the the penguin uh, sushi. <laughs> uh, Mr. Freeze ice cream sundae for oh, dessert. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of fun stuff you could do. But yeah, I, I would not go classy. I would go immersive and fun and over the top because that's that's my vibe. Oh, yeah, totally. That sounds great. So that's what I got off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, it would be so cool. And yeah, I would just uh, I'd have a, a permanent table there. I'd go every day. <laughs> It'd be like my cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for the Wayne Manor mailbox. We're closing that baby up. If you've got something for the Wayne Manor mailbox, uh, you can send that to Holy Batcast at rf for rmcom And as always, a big thank you to everybody who wrote in. We love hearing from you guys. We love your input. Thanks for sharing. And so if you've got something, send an email and we'll get around to it next time. But for now, so we're going to wrap up this episode of Holy Backcast. And Jay, thanks for making the time to talk about toys, talk about cartoons, and then talk about what happens when we die. Ew, ew, ew. All the all the important things. It was it was a ride. It definitely was. <laughs> you know, you never know what you're going to get. It, it, it was a journey, but that's the beauty of it. That is why I love this show because. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. I, I do appreciate it when, like, two episodes ago, me and Brendan talked about the songs, and we got an email that was like, "Yeah, I didn't think I would like that, but it, I shouldn't have doubted it was really good." And I was like, "Okay, well, that's nice." I hope people feel the same about this episode. I hope they see it and go Batman and Robin toys. And then they listen. They're like, okay, it was fun. Yes. Yes. I would like to be asked back everybody. So please, please enjoy this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Um, I hope that they do, but you know, the important thing is we had fun. We did have fun. You know, it's just like little league. It's not whether you win or lose. It's whether you had fun. I am perfectly fine with a participation trophy. (laughs) <laughs> that, that's fine. I'm not a proud man. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll put it up like it's a real award. I don't care. Yeah. Honorable mention. That's fine. Yeah, you're At least it's mention. honorable. Yeah. So anyway, where can we find you skulking about the internet? Uh, you can find me sometimes on Twitter X, whatever, you know, that mess is called, uh, at J a Y W S and at comic pause. That's my, that's where I've been hanging out more just because I'd rather, you know, retweet, retweet silly comic book stuff than, you know, other, other things. Um, also on Instagram under the same handles. I'm in the real fans groups on, uh, uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can find me there. And, uh, like, like Andy's been saying, I've been, uh, writing articles a little bit more often at Batman news, Batman hyphen news.com. Uh, yeah. So just, uh, reach out and, you know, I love to chat and chill and you know, whatever. So, Awesome. And if you have any deep cut random comics questions, Jay's your guy. I will Google it for you. Oh, well, that's not, that's not as fun. <laughs> it's the kind of kind of running joke, but also kind of true. Is, it is. Kind, it is kind of true. I um, I had a <laughs> I will. He will remain nameless out of out of respect. But uh, I think it's a mutual friend of ours. Like I posted on October 1st, I had a, a long Halloween T-shirt that Jamie bought me for Christmas. And so it's just the jack-o'-lantern with the, the Batman smile. And a mutual friend of ours messaged me. He's like, oh, my God, I've been looking for that shirt. Where can I find it? And I literally go to Amazon and I just type in Batman jack-o'-lantern. And it's the first thing that pops up. And I, I send him the link and he goes, yeah, I probably should have just searched Amazon, huh? I'm like, don't worry. I Googled it for you. Happy to help. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, so uh, thank you, Jay. It, it was fun. I appreciate you making the time. And it was great chatting. Uh, always good to chat with you. Oh, yeah. And I know Brendan and Jamie send their best. And I send my best right back. All right. Well, your best for Jamie. Brendan, eh, don't knock yourself out. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, well, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for joining us. Please do follow or subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Again, you can visit holybatcast.com or find Holy Batcast on Facebook, Twitter, X, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast. And again, on the Facebook page is also where I will share all the pictures of all the toys that we talked about. So it'll be nice and convenient for you as you listen. If you've got something for the Wayne Manor mailbox, that email address again is holybatcast at rf4rm.com. Our theme music was created by the talented Gorve and Kateswar. You can find his work at gvtunes.com. And don't forget to check out our friends over at Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, do a little shopping, and use that promo code BATSCAPED for 20% off and free shipping. But that will do it for this episode. On behalf of Jay, I've been Andy. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Holy Batcast is not affiliated with Warner Brothers or DC Entertainment. The views and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. Maybe maybe we can do a follow-up with Batman Forever and Brendan will just chase all over the place and I'll just stand back. I don't know what to, I do not know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh.